This morning, God gave me a word, a prophetic word for all of us. Psalm 144, verse 13, 14, 15 of NIV. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. 15. Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. This is the word of the Lord for each one of us. Write your name there and say, God, I claim this word. Psalm 144 and verse 15. There's nothing about the word. We sang about Yeshua. How many say amen to that? Jacob, Jacob means cheater. Jacob could never enter into his promised destiny until Jacob became Israel. God allows challenges in our life. Look at my hand. And he allows brokenness so that you walk into breakthroughs. This is the promise of God. Please read it again. Better. Our bonds will be filled with every kind of privilege. Let's go step by step. Our bonds will be filled. Now, who is saying this? God is saying. I want you to read this with me loudly. Say, our bonds, bonds will be filled with every kind of provision. Come on, lift your hand and say, I receive that word, Lord. Come on, somebody say, Amen. I receive that fullness in Jesus' name. It's not there, just alone. Our sheep. Read it together. Our sheep will increase by thousands and by ten thousands in our field. The sheep will only increase if the field is growing. How many with me right now? So what is God saying to you? Barns will be full. Sheep upon 10,000 and our fields. You're not going to live by the salary. You're not going to live by the bank balance you have. You're going to live by such abundance of blessing, of provision. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Our barns are going to be full. Our sheep will increase. That means your business. Come on. The work that you're doing and all that God has given you is going to multiply. Come on, somebody say amen. Multiplication. Multiply. Come on, lift your hands. I receive it. Come on, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Further, our oxen will draw heavy loads. What does it mean? There was weariness, not only in you and us. Weariness of people around you who would help you to do what God has called you to do. But today onwards, the yoke of weariness is broken. Come on, lift your hand. I receive that yoke. Come on, lift your hand and say, the yoke of weariness is broken. And what does it say? Our oxen will draw heavy loads. You don't have to kick the ox. You don't have to push the ox. You don't have to motivate the ox. Ox on his own is so motivated that he is going to draw heavy loads. Come on, loudly. Say, I receive this word. My oxen will draw a heavy load. Come on, lift your hands. I love this. There'll be no more breaching of the walls. No going into captivity. No cry of distress in our streets. How many want this word? No more breach. No more. Where you're doing, gathering the banjan and suddenly there's a hole somewhere else. And somebody else is taking away. No more. Say loudly, no more. No more, no more, no more. Come on, lift your hands and say, no more. Say, this is my word. Lord, I receive it. Come on, open your mouth and say, declare this. No more. There'll be breaching of walls. No more distress in our streets. Come on, somebody give glory to Jesus. I receive this word, oh God. Now, if you don't want to receive, it doesn't matter. I'm going to receive it for my life, my home, my family. Come on, household. Not only household. Inheritance turning legacy. Come and lift your hand and say, I receive that word. Come and give the Lord a big clap offering. Now, this is God's word. This is not man's word. Now, listen carefully. God's word for Jacob was promised land. He knew the word, he knew the promise, but until and unless there was a transformation from Jacob to become Israel. Jacob means cheater. Robbing God. 
He robbed his brother, robbed his father, robbed everybody. How many understand what I'm saying? Hello. We all, sometimes, our human nature is like that. But God is saying, day and night, He's saying, day and night, day and night. Let incense arise. What is that incense? Not just singing. But to say, God, day and night, I'm going to depend on you, Holy Spirit. Now what happened to Jacob? God broke him. The hip. And some of us, we're going through our challenges. And it's like limping. There's so much of limping that we have to depend on God. Maybe physical, maybe job, money, business, issues or cases or whatever it could be. God allows that so that we enter into a promised destiny of breakthrough. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24. Read it please. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Now listen to this. This is the beautiful part. We read the prophetic words over our life. And here is an answer. What does he say? The one who calls you is faithful. The one who calls is faithful. Say loudly. The one who calls is faithful. The one who calls me is faithful. That means I was born in my family because of God. Not because of my parents. You're born not because of holy mistake. You're born because God wanted you to be born. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Hello, how many are with me right now? Now God says He brought us into this earth. Listen carefully. He brought us into He's faithful. He helped me to grow. He's faithful. He's brought me thus far. He's faithful. He's made me understand that God is God. That He's my Savior. Faithful. He made me understand that I am His temple. Faithful. Now listen carefully. Faithful is he who's called you and he will do it. Come on, lift your hand and say, Lord, I receive that word. Faithful is your name. You are faithful. So what is the God part? Faithfulness. Then what is my part then? To be faithful. What is faithfulness of my part? Faithfulness of my part is to be full of faith. How many with me right now? Every time Jacob limped in his brokenness, he wants to achieve something he could not. He had to depend on God. He had to call on God. He used to say, God. So what is the topic that we are listening? Our topic today? What is the topic of the message? Our declaration of words clear the dust. To lead us into the destiny that God has designed. We have to be careful of our words. Make a note if you're making writing down notes. Do not judge your season by what you see. Come on, lift your hand and say to yourself. Do not judge your season by what you see. Come on, tell somebody. Do not judge by what you see. Do not judge by your circumstances what you see. Do not judge the season by what you see. This season is something else, Jacob. Next season is promised destiny. Listen carefully. I'm going a little fast now. One season, David was a shepherd boy. The next season, he was a king. One season, Ruth was working in the field. The next season, she's the owner of the cloth. So you're one season, you're working hard. It doesn't matter. God is watching. People may not watch. Friends may not watch. Nobody can watch. But God is faithful. His name is faithful. Faithful is He who has called you. And He will bring it to pass. Come on, lift your hands and Lord, I receive. I receive that word, Lord. So my motivation, your motivation should not be anybody around us. Our motivation should be God alone. That is why we need the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Friends will fail. Family can fail. Anybody can fail. Hello. 
but God who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light the miracle worker the promise keeper oh come on sakaba he is unchanging he's the same yesterday today forever he has called you and he will bring it to pass now come on somebody get excited in god one season ruth is working other season she's owner one season mordecai was outside the palace the next season is sitting with the king in the palace Promotion doesn't come from left or right. Promotion comes from God. Come on lift your hand and say Lord I need your promotion. Come on I need your promotion. Come on I need from you God. In the name of Jesus. We need to walk in that season, God season. Look at my hand steps now. Jacob learned to walk being limping into the promised destiny by seeing as god saw we are physical we are physical eyes physical ears physical body feelings but if you learn in the transformational season which is his transformational season increasing glory what god has already destined for you is going to come to pass come on somebody say amen to that God's purpose for you is to be head and not the tail, lend and not borrow. Today you may have nothing, but tomorrow you'll be so prosperous, you'll be distributing. Joseph was nobody. He was in the prison, but yesterday, but today he's distributing food for years for all the nations of the world. That means that's the call of God upon you. That's the call of God upon me. So I got to train, learn to train myself to walk in God's season. I say 3215 Till the spirit is poured on us from on high and the desert becomes a fertile field and the fertile field seems like a forest Now listen carefully there is wilderness God can see the wilderness but God is saying I'm going to make this wilderness like a forest But how will that wilderness become forest it's only when the holy spirit comes Today we may see wilderness but god sees the same today what you see wilderness as a fertile field that's why he said to the promised land you're going into a land of milk and honey you're going to be head and not the tail land and not borrower today i'm telling you prophetically god is not finished with you your best season is now come on somebody say amen to that he's the glory and the lifter of my head come on paul are you there there's no retirement Come on man. There's no retirement. You and I when you walk in the Holy Ghost, you will live with sharpness of mind. You will have that energy and power as never before. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He has called you to be the head. He has called you to to be lender. He has called you that you'll not borrow. He has called you to live in abundance. That's the promised destiny. The world may say anything. you go on a next you go into this all the shares you going to on learn all this thing what is happening crypto bipto are you with me and everything is going down you get depressed and take anti depression hello you don't have to live by crypto you live by the word of god yeah. when everything is failing god is going to lift you up he's the come on man somebody say amen to that The other day I was praying for somebody for court cases they said for last 15 20 years court cases have gone bad against them so it doesn't matter today we pray justice will come from the supreme court of heaven and you will be vindicated my goodness when i said that he couldn't believe but next day he said pastor whatever you prayed in jesus name came to pass yes. come on lift your hands and say lord i receive justice i receive vindication yes. First Corinthians 1:27 God has chosen foolish things but not fools God has chosen foolish things weak things insignificant things weaklings poor undeserving why is he chosen this foolish things weakness so that what does the scripture say read it please 
No, for God selected deliberately. Chose. Deliberately, my goodness. That means if God has chosen you, God has an intention. Come on, lift your hand and say, Amen. Amen. There is a deliberate intention. What is a deliberate intention? God wants to show how much He loves me by lavishing His grace upon me. Amen. Come on, lift your hand and say, Lord, I receive that. I receive that. I receive that. Tell somebody I'm God's favorite. Yes, I'm God's favorite. Tell somebody I'm God's favorite. He has deliberately chosen me. Come on, somebody say, deliberately. I have not chosen him, but he has chosen me. I may give up on him, but he never gives up on me. Come on. Come on, somebody say amen to that. I may give up, but he doesn't give up. I told somebody the other day, Peter only gave up three times. Denied. I must have done 300 times, three times. Are you with me? How many with me? Is it true? How many times you say, yes, Lord, promise. December 1st, I will do it. How many Decembers have come and gone? Come December, are you with me? Hello. These two years of dealings of God had made our worship and dedication meaningful. Every word that we speak is become meaningful. 45 million died. We are still here. 45 million. If you are still in this room and still alive, it's purely because of God's grace. It's not because of vitamin C or not because of zinc or immunity or PP. Or P- are you with me? Hello. Purely. The goodness and mercy of God. Come on, lift your hands. Lord, I receive that. I receive that mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Read it again. Deliberately. No, for God selected deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. Now, God has chosen you and I, Joseph. Who is Joseph? Cheater. Peter. Unlearned. Thomas, hello. Mary Magdalene, caught in adultery. God chooses the weakest, foolishness, foolish things. Why? Because then only all glory goes to God. Come on, lift your hand and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for being trying to be wise in the world. Help me to walk in foolishness of believing in you. That Lord, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. So let's get in deeper into the word. If you tolerate your present season, you'll never be seeing the triumph in your walk. And you'll never have a testimony. But if you learn to celebrate your present trials season, you'll have a testimony of overcoming. What is the key to celebrate? The key to celebrate is guarding your words. Key to celebrate is knowing that God has called you foolishness, foolish things. Because God has called us for proving that he is alive. Your words clear the dust, create a pathway. God designed for us. Hannah was barren. Her brokenness that she was barren. But she never gave up on God. She pursued the presence of God and she birthed it. She celebrated the barrenness by worshiping God. You got to celebrate your, your weaknesses, celebrate your, your challenges of life and say, God, I know, I know all that is happening to me is for your glory. You have not given up on me and I will not give up on you. Faithful is you has called you and I will be full of faith to walk in that place because he prepares a table for me before my enemies. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life and I shall be in the house of the Lord. 10,000 can fall around me. It will not come near me. Why? Because you are God's favorite. Watch out your words. Watch out what you speak. If you do not watch out, you'll be washed out. It's a principle of God. The words that you speak. 
In the midst of darkness, God says, let there be light. It's a spiritual, eternal principle. Abraham, barren, husband and wife. But their barrenness came forth with fruitfulness, the birthing of Isaac. How did it happen? Of course, God, part, God did it. But what is Abraham's part? Abraham's part, look at me. He had to count the stars. One, two, three, four. He had to count the sands of the sea. Literally to say so many. That means you and I, in the midst of promises of God, the blessing of God, the covenant of God, you're living in the wilderness, deadness. That's where faith comes in. Faith is given that you will respond to God. Abraham counted stars and sands. David, when he saw Goliath, he said, you come to me with sword and spirit. I come to you in the name of the Lord. His declaration. I love this word. Hebrew 13, 5, B and 6. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The two things are here. God part and our part. God part. What is God part? Verse 15. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's God said. God's part. What is our part? So that we may boldly say. God said it's one thing. Yes, Lord, I claim your word. Yes, Lord, I claim your word. But beyond this, you got to say what God says. Lord, you will never leave me nor forsake me. I am a royal priesthood, holy nation. My body is a temple of the living God. I will live to see goodness of God in the land of the living. If God be for me, who can be against me? So when you're declaring God's word, you're saying what he said. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I may boldly say, what is he saying? Read it. The Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The Lord is my helper. He's quoting a psalm. The Lord is my helper. But you can only quote the scripture if you spend time with scripture. You can only quote a scripture if you have memorized the scripture. You can only quote the scripture if you read the word, meditated, and made it as an application in the times of Goliaths in your life. If you all the time have some intercessory praying for you, please pray for me, please pray for me, please pray for me. If everybody's praying, it's like everybody breathing, but you're not breathing. How many of you know God does not have grandchildren? What a revelation. That means God has only children. You are a child of God. Come and lift your hand. I'm redeemed of the Lord. I'm a child of God. Come and lift your hand. I'm God's favorite. Come and lift your hand and say, Lord, I'm God's favorite. I'm God's child. Come on, lift your hand and say. Let's go a little deeper now. So we have to be careful what we say. Very often in the stress. How many of you know in the times of stress? We say the wrong thing at the right time. Two people are honest. If God really loved me, why this happen? Is there anyone here who counsels God? Pastor, no, no. You are all holy people here. Have you been there where you counsel God? We counsel God. We speak unbelieving words. You remember Joseph, Mary, Joseph? When God, are you with me? You remember Zechariah? Hello? What happened? What happened to any one of them? They can't speak anything. Why? Because unbelief. How many with me right now? Unbelief aborts God's destiny in your life. But belief births that destiny that God has for you. Come and lift your hands and say, Lord, guard me from unbelief. Guard me. Come on, lift your hands. That's the word that came. The walls, there'll be no encroaching. Come on, there'll be no unbelief. Parents, you're responsible to train your children to meditate upon God's word. Training them to speak God's word. Especially in exam times. Are you with me? Children, lay your hands on your head and say, 
I am 10 times more intelligent than the children of the age. Hello, not the parents put your hand on your head, children said, are you with me? Our children are 10 times more intelligent. So if you celebrate, you birth the destiny of God. If you tolerate and complain, you abort. Let's go deeper. Matthew 15, 10 and 11. Read it, Amplified Version. And Jesus called the people to him and said to them, Listen and grasp and comprehend. Listen and grasp and comprehend. Listen and grasp and comprehend. He is giving a very important understanding of the spiritual heavenly principle of experiencing heaven on earth. And what is that? It is not what goes into the mouth of a man that makes him unclean and defiled. But what comes out of the mouth, this makes a man unclean and defiles him. Now listen carefully. The Lord is saying to you and I, what goes in doesn't make you clean or unclean. But what comes out of your mouth makes you clean or unclean. One moment we are so spiritual, heaven and earth, angel, angel, angel. Are you with me? At one moment, glory, glory, glory. Next moment, another story. Tell somebody, I think he's talking about you now. Hello. Are you with me? So training, training. What training I need? What is discipleship? What training I need? What training anybody needs? No matter who you are, how much anointed we are, we need the training. Training of what? To make sure you're conscious what comes out of you. I've said this several years ago. One guy spoke 15 languages. Nobody knew his mother tongue. So somebody was questioning, what is his mother tongue? He said, you want to know his mother tongue? Three o'clock in the morning when he's sleeping, pour cold water on him. His mother tongue will come out. <laughs> the real you, the real you comes when somebody touches the wrong nerve. Why are you looking at me like that? Hello? <laughs> is it true? Hello? We are so spiritual. Hallelujah. Stotram kartave. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? And that one now it does. God. Finish. What comes out? So I'm praying. God, I want to die to myself. The problem is we don't die to ourselves. We kill everybody. His tongue is so poisonous. And who is cutting off the destiny? Not the devil. It's we are unwise. We're not training ourselves. Now listen carefully. If you do not go to the training school of driving and you say, okay, by faith I will drive. Hello? By faith the buffalo will turn away from you. Hello? You need to understand training is important. No master, no servant is equal to the master. But when the servant is trained fully, he becomes equal to master. God's word is given. Why? Not to keep you busy from devil. God's word is given so that you will enter into your destiny. The head, not the tail. Lender, not borrower. I will live to see goodness of God in the land of the living. I will be like Joseph. I will be like modern David. I will be like, come on, that child of God. A platform of God's glory to the nations of the world. So what goes in doesn't make you clean or unclean. But what comes out? How many with me right now? We are so safe and sound. Until we are hurt. There's so much of sound. The sound becomes more sound. When you're angered. When you're irritated. When we are exhausted. How many with me right now? Disturbed. When things do not go your way. Have you heard that song? How long to tell you? How much to tell you? Hello. When will you listen? We have to guard ourselves. I believe we have entered into a season of abnormal normal. Abnormal normal is a season that means 
supernatural experience. I've never seen such anointing as I'm seeing in last two, three weeks. 80 year old lady, she came forward and she said, We laid hands and prayed. Just one minute. No shouting, no yelling. Grace of God coming. I opened her ears. I said, now, can you hear? She's humming the song that was sung by the choir. 80 year old. I've seen hands grew, feet grew. 45 years sickness. Pastor Tarang will now tell you. Sicknesses of ages. Medical complications. Hands growing, feet growing, people crying profusely. It's a, it's a supernatural season for all of us. That means you have to walk in the supernatural. Come on. Not just some friends here, some people here, some man of God here, some man of Everybody should walk in the supernatural. What does it mean? In the midst of wilderness, you walk in abundance. Yes. Arun, can you just stand up please? We're going to pray for Arsh. Just lift your hands. Arun and me, we went to a home of his friends. This child was born. Uh, no retinas. Very influential people. But money cannot help them to get the child a new eyes. We shared the gospel with them. They committed their heart to God to believe impossible. And we told them, we are going to pray on a daily basis. God is going to move in this arsh. New eyes, I'm telling you, man, if that happens, you watch the whole city will hear about Jesus. Come on, how many say amen to that? Come on, come on, come on, how many say amen to that? Come on, lift your hands. Lord, we are willing to be foolish enough. Come on, lift your hand, lift your hand, lift your hand. Two year old baby, so sharp, so intelligent baby, so handsome baby. We asked him. I just asked him, where is Arun sitting? And he'll say, he's on my left. He can't see, but he recognized the voice. His mother is saying, whichever car goes from their neighborhood, he will exactly say, which neighbor's car is that? There's no eyes, but he's saying, that. come on. God allowed this happen so that the glory will come for Jesus. Come on, lift your hands and say, come on. Father, we pray for Arsh in the name of Jesus. What doctors cannot do, what money cannot do, what Lord power cannot do, you do it now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for new retina of Arsh in the name of Jesus. He will see in the name of Jesus. Psalm 107 verse 20. We release that word upon him, oh God. New retina. Super, you will surprise us. The supernatural miracle that he will see with his eyes and people will come and say, only Jesus, only Jesus, only Jesus, the miracle worker, the way maker, or oh, the promise keeper. He has done it, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release this miracle now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May I request you, please keep this in your personal prayer every day. Take it in your personal prayer. Or just remember us. New retina, new retina. How many will do it? Come on, lift your hand. Every day. Are you with me? So what are we learning here? It's being spiritual. Spiritual is maintaining your sanity. In the midst of challenge. In the midst of hardships. Maintaining. I saw Arsha's mom. She doesn't know the Lord. But she, right Arun? She is so strong. She's so, what do you call it? Right mind. She talks to him as if this child can see. I was so blessed. We went to bless them. They blessed us. How much more God's people, when you and I, we have a relationship with God, that we can walk with sober heart and sober mind. Keeping our hearts right. Words are very important. Especially when you're exhausted, disturbed, when things do not go your way. To enter into your promised destiny, the words are important. Those words that you speak releases your destiny. You'll keep saying, I'll fail, I'll fail, I'll fail. You'll surely fail. I've seen some people. They said, I will die because of Corona. Two of them, I know. They died. I said, don't say that. 
you got to learn to speak God's word. Yes, you got to take medication. You got to do whatever protection you got to do. But make sure because your tongue has the power to give life or death. Matthew chapter 5 verse 33. Again, you have heard that it was said to the men of old, you shall not swear falsely, but you shall perform your oaths to the Lord as a religious king. You will perform the words that you have spoken. What vows you made to God? God, if you bless me this, I will do this. God, if you guard me, protect me, I will do this. The oaths that you made, the promises that you made, the commitment that you made, you have to keep that word. If you do not keep it, God says you're a liar. Next time, God, when you say, God, I will do it for you, this, God says, uh huh. Hello. You forget what you spoke, but God remembers. How many of you know God has great memory? You and I, we need to come to a place that we celebrate God's goodness in the land of the living by controlling our tongue, meditating upon God's word. I want to close here with very important points. How do you control your tongue? Praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. Definitely, spiritually. How do you control your tongue? In the adverse circumstances, continue to pray in the spirit, in the tongues, pray in the spirit, rehearsing God's word, releasing God's word. Next. Think before you speak. How do you control your tongue? Think before you speak. Next, speaking only that which is needed. Hello. How many of you sometimes we speak what is not needed? Then you say, no, I, I actually, I, I actually, hello. I actually didn't mean that. I, have you been there? How many of you made the regret? Hello, I'm the only guy here. Come on now. Hello. We say what we have to say. Nikal gaya. Are you with me? Like nikal padi. Nikal gaya is one thing. Nikal padi. Hello. What happened? What was going smoothly? You dug the hole. Speaking what is needed. Speak only that is appropriate. Avoid casual conversations in the serious moments. Something seriously is happening here and you're giving a high five here and making a joke. If you do not have any nice thing to speak, please do not speak. I'll say it again. If you do not have any nice thing to speak, please do not speak. That's an amen for that. If you do not have any nice thing, why? Because if you do not speak nice things, they slice people. If you do not have anything positive, affirmative, motivating, if you don't have any of those things, then just smile. And then shut. Shut your mouth. Why? Because the scripture says even a fool is called wise when his mouth is shut. Tell somebody he's not talking about me now. Hello. Are you with me? Hello. Even a fool is called wise when his mouth is shut. How many say we are wise people? Amen. Speak affirmative. Next. Negative words never produce positive results you got to be careful the words that we speak if you don't have anything positive don't have any affirmative don't have anything to motivate just smile or move out of that place next count the consequences of your words Sometimes we make vows. You remember we make vows? God, I'm so desperate. You give me this, I'll give you this. Hello? In desperation, we make vows. Be careful. Check yourself. Do you really want to upset the other side? I'm learning many of these things. 
Do you really want to upset? You can never control situation by raising the voice. What is the solution to control our tongue? How can you be spiritually tuned in obedience, learning to release yourself in the hands of God? Come and lift your hands and say, Lord, I release myself. I release myself in your hands, Lord. I release my tongue, Lord. The tongue has no bones. But Lord, only you can control my tongue, Lord. Only you can make me wise. Only Lord, you will help me to celebrate your promises. Come on, somebody say amen to that. Only you will help me to overcome the limitations of my words that I speak, Lord. Scripture says when there are too many words, sin is easily found. Release people, forgive people, reconcile. Then you don't have to use any other words. These words come because of unforgiveness. These things happen because of toxin inside. These things happen because you're not released, not forgiven. It's there inside. It comes out. Emotionally, you're so upset and angry. Emotionally, you're so empty within. Instead of depending on the Holy Spirit, your spirit is just corrupted. That's why you've got to walk in the renewal of the mind. Night and day, day and night, night and day. What did we saying? Night and day, day and night. Not just singing in the spirit, but meditating, rehearsing God's word. He who meditates on God's word is like a tree planted beside the living water. The fruits will grow in the seas and the leaves will not wither away. And whatever you do, you shall be prosperous. Now that is a covenant. Now for that to come to pass, God's part, I have to do my part. Humility is an aroma. So you and I, when we come to God and say, God, from today onwards, I rededicate my life. Look at the character of God. Psalm 138 verse 2. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth and faithfulness. For you have exalted above all else. You have exalted your word above your name. If you put King James Version. You have exalted your word above your name. Read that word, that thy truth. Thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. See, listen to this. Thou hast magnified your word above your name. That means God is a thorough gentleman. He keeps his word. His word is his bond. If he has given you a promise, tomorrow you will not say, Sorry, Shaker, you know what? I think I exaggerated my promise to you. I'm sorry. I'm too, I know I was so lavish. Maybe I was thinking of somebody else and you shaker, but it's that shaker. Are you with me? It's never like that. If you said it, he will do it. He's already paid the price. How much did he pay the price? God became man. He paid the price for you and I. That's the character of God. That means what are we learning? Magnify his word above his name. Now listen to this. We sang the song, day and night, day and night, we worship Jesus. Are you with me? Now that Jesus whom you worshipped and I worshipped, He is the man. He is God. God became man. Now that God, He magnifies His word above His name. That means, word is His bond. His word is His character. His word is spirit and life. Psalms 89. Read it please. Psalms 89. 34 and 35. I love this. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. 35. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. Once I've spoken, number one, he says, I'll never break. We're worshipping a God who keeps his word. That's why Jesus came. Son of God became son of man. He did not come to make you and me Christian. He didn't come to give us a religion. Why did he come? So that we would walk with a head high. So that Jacob will enter into his promised destiny. And what is the destiny? Heaven on earth. We don't have to die to go to heaven. Heaven comes inside when you believe in Jesus. Life comes. Jesus comes. When he comes, you are the fullness of God. You are the breath of God. You are the life of God. What is in heaven? Joy. What is in heaven? Favor. What is in heaven? Blessing. What is in heaven? Christ himself. Christ in me, the hope of glory. So why did he come? He's a God who never lies. 
He's a God. He's a God who never breaks His covenant. And the most final one, this is really, really important. Psalm 115 verse 8, the King James Version. Let's stand to our feet. Read it, please. They that make them are like unto them. So ah. is everyone that trusted in them. They who make them, they become like them. In other words, you become like whom you worship. If I worship a God this morning and I made a dedication that I worship God who never breaks his covenant, who never alters what he promised, he's a God of his word. His word is his bond. If I learn like Jacob in my brokenness, there's a pain, there's a sorrow, or there's whatever challenges, I will not look to the circumstances that is around me. I will walk by faith. He is faithful. I will walk in full of faith, trusting in Him, honoring Him, blessing Him, keeping His word by rehearsing the word night and day, day and night. I watch over my word. And when I watch over my word, I'm clearing all the doubts. I'm clearing all the clouds. I'm clearing, I'm paving the way to enter into my promised destiny. Father, this morning, this afternoon, this is not the word just for us to tickle or give us knowledge. But this word is downloaded from heaven, Lord. That we will all walk into a promised destiny. Your destiny for us is to be rulers, to rule and reign, to be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. That in Christ Jesus we triumph. You called us to be your government. You called us to be our ministers. You called us to be global peacemakers. You called us to be influencers. You called us to be rich and God prosperous. Our Lord is fallen in pleasant places. We have a godly inheritance. Lord, us and our family, children, grandchildren, and coming thousand generations, if you do not come, is going to celebrate a well watered garden whose waters will never fail. You called us to be that well watered garden where heaven is experienced on earth. We are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. I pray today as your word has come, we humble ourselves to say, Lord, forgive us. From today onwards, we will live by the word. The written word has become living word. Let the living word become manifested word. Let the manifested word become demonstration word. That Lord Christ in us, the hope of glory. That we are the written epistle. When people see us, even before talking about Jesus, they will see Jesus in us. We are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Oh Father, I pray today, anoint us afresh as we sing this song. Break the yoke of the enemy. But no longer lie, no longer compromise, no longer, oh God, anything in the spirit of this world that we will walk in obedience. Our yes will be yes. Our no will be no. We'll walk in the consciousness that what makes us clean or unclean not what we eat or drink, but what comes out of our mouth. We will train ourselves, we'll tune our spirit man to walk in circumspectly. Like Paul prayed, I pray, it's no longer I, but Christ lives in me. Father, I pray today, empower us with that baptism of fire, spirit without measure, that our lives will be transformed forever. From faith to faith, from glory to glory, 34, 64, 100 fold for your glory alone. And all God's people said,